Well, 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 YouTube. It's been a long time. I feel like we're estranged lovers or something. And that's weird for me. And you. Anyway, what you are gazing upon are the last three prediums. Ever. Ever. If anybody requests that I make them a predium, I'm going to fly to wherever they are and stab them. Um, yeah, I'm a little sick of the bright names. Uh, so, start this off. These two right here, these very special fellows, these are going to Don the Dealer. Dealer Don. And I'll put his website in the doobly doo. And this is Jim's. So, this is number 96, 7, 97. And it is, uh, of, of this trio here, it is the most pretty ish done a little, little different uh, texturing in here. I thought it was kind of cool. It's a pretty clean Pradium. A little custom titanium screw there. Um, milled clip. You ready? Boom. Sort of a normal Pradium blade. Like there's such a thing. They're all different. Yeah, yeah. So, that's number 97. Going to dawn. This crazy monkey right here, number 98, she's a little funky, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little, a little crazy with it. Funky fresh. Also, titanium screw that I made. You ready for this though? Wait for it. Nightmare grind. This is the uh, first nightmare grind knife I've ever done. And the only pretty one with a nightmare grind. It's an interesting grind. Not super fun. Bingo. That's that. So, going to Don the Dealer. Here is number 100, Mr. Jimmy the Skeleton. Let's walk through this knife a little bit. See if we can get in close. Let's get right up, right up in here. So that, will you focus? No? Ooh, there it is. That right there, my friends, is a uh, zirconium pivot screw with a zirconium thumb stud lightning strike carbon fiber very nice transition probably one of the better ones I've ever done milled clip this this one has all been contoured and then that is a lightning strike carbon fiber lock bar stabilizer and then, you'll notice this flipper is a little different looking. It's because it was a completely custom made blade. Boom. A little, uh, little tanto action for Jim there. It's quite a, quite a freaking thing there, Jim. Quite a freaking thing. So that's Jim's. These are all shipping tomorrow, so they should be in their destinations on Friday. And we're done. We are freaking done. Done with Prediums. Super excited. And that means I get to start really concentrating on model number two, or as I'm affectionately referring to it as the Deuce. Um, right here are all the ceramic bearings that uh, the dear sweet apprentice sat here and popped all the... 440C balls out and replace them with ceramic balls. Yeah. I, I did a couple and I was like, this is a job for the apprentice. Um, I posted it on Instagram, but we ended up making a little a little plate for it. So you can dump the balls in and scooch them over into, into a pattern to pop them out a little faster. A little faster. It's definitely tedious work. And that magnifying glass came in super handy. Uh, this bag right here is actually a bag of carbon fiber inserts. Just got up from Waterjet today. Looking exciting. Um, oh, here, I'll show you my uh, my carry. It's based on uh, model number two. Uh, I posted Instagram pictures, so I don't think I've showed it in a YouTube video yet. Uh, so I was getting a little, a little crazy with the CNC. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Why not slap a big fat logo on there? Look at how obnoxious that is. But you know, 
this is my knife. So. Um, I got a little carried away with the sweat on this one. A little carried away. So it's not quite a spear anymore. No, it's more of like a buoy. Buoy. Oh, uh, that is a Timascus pivot screw. If you can see it. Timascus is so hard to get on camera. No, that's not any better. And it just so happened that I like just cut a piece that was right in the middle of a, uh, I think it was either raindrop, I think it was raindrop that I used for that, right in the middle of one of the drops, so it, it came out really cool. Um, I was screwing around with anodizing, but, um, and my, uh, my mill jumped when I was milling in for that part, so it's an extra big steel lock bar insert. So, sort of what Mono Lumber 2 looks like, sort of been heavily modified to suit moi. Yeah, these are going to be very, very nice. Very nice indeed. And speaking of them, go to the board, because I was actually going to start writing stuff on the board. So, see, Predium's gone, Model 2, the deuce. Um, it's really, really hard to give a, a distinct time frame. Um, I have a really good idea of how long it's going to take me to make them now, uh, since I just made a hundred knives. Um, and, uh, since I know what, what machining has to be done to them and how quickly that's going to work. And, and I, I, I have been screwing around the CNC, so I feel a lot more confident in, in it now because I've been working with it for 10 months now. But, um, so this is kind of a conditional statement. So if I get all of the parts back and there are there are scales and clips that are out, a water jet, uh, and having some stuff done to them, uh, the blades are finished from water jet and they are currently getting uh, precision ground because that plate is way thicker than I wanted, but it was the only plate that was available. So currently right now it's about 200,000 thick. That's pretty thick. Uh, so it's getting, um, all those blades are getting precision ground down to, uh, 157, no, 175 thousandths. So it's a significant reduction in material, and it would take me, literally, <laughs> it would take me, uh, probably an entire week to, to PG all those down here. Uh, and I would go through so much abrasives, and it would be really, really time-consuming and tedious, and I would really hate it. Uh, so it's just way more cost-effective, uh, for everyone involved to just have those get uh, get done in a shop because there's a lot of machining shops around here and uh and it's always fun to meet you know other people that do other machining stuff and talk about cncs and what carbide bits they have and stuff like that it's fun but yeah so the blades come back the scales come back i have inlays i have bearings Ooh, i gotta get hardware that shouldn't take too long. It's a pretty rapid response. Uh, so if that's all back here before Christmas, then that means I can come in after the Christmas holiday and start working on them. And probably grind, probably grind five blades a day. Probably grind, grind and heat treat five blades a day. So that's a week solid of, of working on blades. Because uh, they're, they're significantly... Uh, uh, more time-intensive grind than the Prediums because um, they're going to be a lot uh, a lot thinner and they're a lot higher. So there's a lot more material to remove. And here, we'll just look at it. <laughs> there's a lot more material to remove and I'm taking them way, way, way thinner. Um, and then getting swedges lined up is... It's, it's never fun. <laughs> it's always a nightmare. Uh, but, yeah. Because I want them to have distinct swedges. Not quite that radical, but... Uh, Significant, interesting. The the macaroni prototype has a good swedge on it, even though it's only grind on one side. Let's go into the darkness here. Let's see if I can show you. It's gonna be good. I like I like this swedge better. But I'll probably I'll probably put in the swedge about halfway through grinding and then go back and can finish the rest of the grinds. So that'll probably be like the preheat tree grind, and then I won't touch the swedge again. I'm gonna come back and regrind that and take it thinner after heat treat. So that's, that's it's more like what it's going to look like. That That is the blade shape. That's probably more of the grinds I'm going to do. Probably. Uh, dude, putting angle grinds on aluminum is not cool at all. 
So this is the aluminum prototype. So imagine that, but lightning strike carbon fiber. It's beautiful. And I haven't heard back from Steve Kelly about my titanium privet screws. So if they don't come in, I'm just gonna have to make some. So I'll just, I'll make them. They're definitely gonna have titanium pivot screws. Um, obviously they're getting ceramic bearings, no pocket clips, uh, Hoback rolling detents, steel lock bar inserts. Oh yeah. Oh, I figured out how much those damn things make, cost me to make. They cost $25 a piece to make. Yeah. That's an expensive little part. <laughs> The, uh, like the handle skills. Well, no, a handle scale doesn't cost that much. $25 little part. But, uh, yep, that's what's up with mod number two. Very excited to bake it because it's going to be a sick knife. And, uh, congratulations to all you guys that got on that list, you lucky bastards. And I realized it was a little difficult being Christmas time, coming out with a new model and asking for deposits. I realized that, but it's like, shoot, what are we gonna do? Are you supposed to wait? <laughs> Gotta keep the business running. So, the deuce. If all the parts get in before Christmas, then I will work on them after Christmas and into January, so they would, they would be done. All of them, all 25 would be finished by basically uh, the end of January would be the, the the deadline, the hard deadline that they would, I would shoot myself if they weren't done by then. Um, because they need to be done. Because I got another, another little something I want to get done here. So, ooh, it's like a whirling vortex of moving air in here. I'm gonna need you to chill out for a second. Um, model number three. Focus. Now. Do it. It's, uh, it's gonna be pretty ridiculous. Because that's how thick it's gonna be. 220,000 blade, 190,000 thick titanium. It's gonna be pretty sick. So what I was thinking is, it was like, okay, so if I put, if I put a bunch of my favorite makers together, what would they make? And so I was like, all right, so if I put Marsh together with Horton, because I'm going to do a, a fatty uh, chisel grind on this, if I put Marsh with Horton, and what else was I thinking? A little, there's a little bit of birch in here too. I'm not going to lie with birch and then since I keep getting so many requests to do big thick honking knives like Medford um, throw on a little little Medfordness but you know make it a cool knife and um it's a little, little jab at the Medford uh that's what I would come up with is this monstrosity of a knife and so I'm gonna use uh, N360 nitrogen stainless steel uh, I put it in a knife that went to a green beret, and he's been beating the shit out of it. And he sends me pictures of him like making bombs and things like that with it. And uh, he's loving it. He says it's, it's by far the best performing steel he's used. And we're talking about a guy who has you know Medfords and Striders and Hinders and stuff like that that he's used out in the field. And uh, it's nice to hear that something I made is outperforming those knives. So I uh, I. I I mean, looking at it, looking at its uh, its data sheet, looking at, at some of the propaganda materials on it, I was like, that seems like a really interesting steel, uh, because um, basically at 60 Rockwell, it has uh, very, very close to uh, S7 impact resistance, which is really impressive for a stainless steel, because normally stainless steels don't have super duper impact resistance. Uh, but yeah, it's a really high impact resistance stainless steel. Uh, so I'm really, really excited about it. And it's uber stainless, because it's... Um, it's got a lot of nitrogen in it, replacing those uh, chromium carbides with nitrides. Very nice. So, gotten, gotten good reviews about the steel. And of course, like I don't do like a normal heat treat on it. I, I had to kind of experiment and figure out what I wanted to do with it uh, heat treat wise. And so I think the heat treat that, I, that I'm running it is pretty, pretty substantial. 
yielding a good a good blade. Um, so this is obviously this is bearing assisted. They're going to have uh, they'll have ceramic bearings as well. Big fan of ceramic bearings. Uh, they'll have steel lock bar inserts. Um, probably rolling detents. Um, they'll have breakers that'll also be made out of N690, uh, and the stop pins will be made out of N690 as well. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able, to, I'm going to have those made or if I'm going to make them here, because uh, that's actually a part that I can make on the CNC now. So, and there's only going to be 20 of these that are going to get made, uh, because basically it's all the steel that I can get a hold of, uh, unless I want to spend thirty thousand dollars get steel from Austria. <laughs> which is not going to happen. So, because I don't have $30,000. But, uh, yeah, I think I am going to do that, uh, that, uh, thumb notch, or not, whatever you want to call it, pocket. And I don't know if I'll, if I'll engrave the new logo in there. And I, you see, I'm seeing it get a little crazy on me. I don't know if I'll engrave the new logo in there or if I'll have that lasered in. But it's definitely going to be like a pretty rugged looking knife, so we'll do like a stone wash. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to do any kind of milling, uh, interesting milling stuff on the handle, or if I'm just going to leave them just plain tie and just kind of contour them and, and put nice chamfers on them. Uh, I don't even know if these starbursts are going to stay. I was just messing around with sand too. So, and uh, I'm definitely going to find different screws. While I like these screws, they look great on a, on a smaller knife. They, do, they look kind of kind of silly on a big knife so I like to maybe do a bigger slightly more industrial looking screw um, and maybe this would be a, a knife that I would put titanium screws on because they're going to be really not cheap uh, they have a high material cost and because um, all that all that thickness that costs extra money especially since all materials are priced by the pound um, so you're looking at a knife it's going to be it's not going to be quite as heavy as a Praetorian tie um, it won't be a full pound of, of knife, but it'll be it'll be close. It's a big boy. It'll have a mill pocket clip as well. So um, I'm not actually sure if I'm gonna uh, if I'm gonna offer this knife directly to the public, directly to you guys. I might end up just selling them to Blade HQ. So there might be a, a Blade HQ exclusive. We'll see. I'll have to talk to uh, Jacob, see if he wants to do it. But. Uh, these would be uh, these would be coming out like the end of February, something like that. End of February, middle of March. When I do make them, and I am going to make them. I I'm excited about this knife. I made it uh, an original prototype for it out of just sort of my normal standard size stuff. So like 160 thou tie and 175 thou um, what was it uh, M390, and I really like that. And I was going to carry it like it was it was for me to carry around and. and see how it performs with a, it has a, ch a chisel grind and stuff see how I liked it and if it was something I wanted to do and it was um, I put a bunch of time ask as, you know accents and stuff on it I was really excited to carry it and then uh, one of my one of my long time clients goes hey Elliot yeah, is that uh, is that knife for anybody in particular and I was like well it was for me was, can I buy it I'm like, yeah make me an offer so he made me a, a very nice offer that I couldn't refuse so he got it I'm 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 excited about this knife. It's gonna be pretty wicked. Um, no, no, the the bumblebee's not put together, so maybe I, I want to show you. All I'm saying is the apprentice and I were screwing around, and um, <laughs> I I drew up a knife in in CAD, and uh, apparently I didn't bother writing down any of the dimensions because I ended up with a knife that big. For size comparison, let's go ahead and put it on top of that knife. <laughs> so this, this CNC is running this thing and I'm like, man, I thought that was going to be a lot bigger. So I went back in and measured all the stuff and I was like, damn, that is tiny. So this is a teeny tiny uh, bearing assisted flipper. And it actually works, that's the crazy part. Uh, it's a uh, S90V in this blade still because it was uh, S90V is all I had like relatively thin stock in. So S90V blade still bearing assisted flipper <laughs> with like a two something inch blade. It's hilarious. It's adorable.
and see how we were we were playing around with CNC stuff. So I'll get that thing finished up here sometime soon. Ooh. And so it's Christmas time, and nothing says "I love you, mom" like a uh, like a badass carved titanium knife from your son. See, my mom's you know obviously a girl, so she's kind of girly, but uh, she's also pretty hardcore because she made me. So we were kind of a crazy, gnarly hardcore knife. Um, it did actually have a blade. It was heat treated and. Basically, I was doing the final grinds on it and totally screwed it up. And I was like, all right, screw that. We're done. And I broke it into a thousand pieces and threw it away. So I got to make a new blade for her. Hopefully by Christmas. That'd probably be a good idea. Um, and then, yeah, so I'm going to get to do some custom stuff, which is going to be nice. Is there are people on, the, on my custom list for a long time. And they're like, do I get a knife anytime soon? I'm like, yes, I swear. I'm trying, I'm trying. So that, uh, that's basically what's happening around here at the Forge. It's, uh, looking forward to the new year, uh, an interesting new year. Um, much more fun for me um, because I get to, basically what we're going to try and do is try and design and, and get out kind of a short run. And by short run, I mean 25, 20 um, uh, models run every every month, basically, every month and a half, something like that. And so, like, while I'm f at the tail end of finishing those, I'll have all, I mean, the CAD's already basically made for model number three, um, but I'll have, uh, I'll start having all the parts cut and stuff like that from Waterjet and, and uh, get them ready to get all machined. I just keep cruising and make whole bunches of new interesting knives. And so, so this is more of like a, like a mid-size, you know, it's a 3.6 inch blade, more of a mid-size knife. Um, the model number three is a gigantic knife. It's got a four, little well, four plus inch blade. And then, so I'm going to go back for model number four, which will be, you know, March, April sometime. And I'll make, uh, I'll make that one kind of more of a smaller kind of gents knife. Uh, still bearing a flipper, you know, still super high end steel and something like that. Cause, uh, I've been doing, um, some smaller, kind of more gent, sort of more um, clean look knives um, for people like The Apprentice. I did one for him for Christmas, and I did one for my dad for Christmas, and I liked them. I thought they were nice, and, and Instagram liked them as well. All the people on Instagram thought they were cool. So I'll probably do kind of a smaller, more gent, gent knife type knife. Um, but maybe still a little bit, a little bit industrial, you know. So. You know, not like super thin or anything like that, because, I don't know. That's the plan, man. I think. Because the predams are done. The predams are done. <laughs> bye bye. I'm so excited to have the predams done. Oh, man. I freely admit it. I bit off way more than I could chew. Way more. And I appreciate you guys' patience and stuff. I didn't have anybody really bug the shit out of me for them, which is good. Because there's nothing worse than being rushed. So, they are done. They're done. Yes. Yes. Yep. Just knock that board over. Well, YouTube. Um, if I don't make another video before the, the Christmas commences, um, Merry Christmas. Hanukkah already happened, didn't it? I think it did. Sorry, my Jewish friends. And, um, and whatever else other people celebrate, Kwanzaa, I don't know what other strange holidays there are out there. I'm sure there's a bunch. But if I don't see you guys, uh, again, then, uh, happy holidays, how about that? from Fair and Forge. Ooh, another thing I'm going to try and roll out um, here in the in the new year is I want to do more more clothing type stuff because people have been asking me for, uh, for shirts and like we had some and like with this logo a couple of people have them 
And so, come on, come on. So a couple of people have them with, with this this logo. So we're gonna do you know some more more shirt and uh, probably some hats and maybe a hoodie. I'd like a hoodie with my logo on it. Who my kid? So we'll do that. Get that up for you guys so people can get some swag. That's uh, that's about it. It's crazy. All right, YouTube. I will. Uh, I'll talk at you later sometime. Hopefully. Bye.